Every now and then you notice that the house needs painting. Quite a job and often a shock when you realise what it's going to take out of your wallet. However, there is an alternative. By doing it yourself, you'll save a bundle and we'll show you the way that professionals do the job. The first thing to do is wash the house down with a pressure washer to get rid of all the dust and grime on the walls. Wet the walls and leave them to soak for 10 minutes. Let the water soak into the dirt and loosen it from the wall. After about 10 minutes, wash it down again, starting at the top. This will get all the dust and cake dirt off the wall to leave a good, clean surface for the paint to adhere to. The pressure washer will blast off loose paint and save you from having to brush or scrape too much. Any stubborn contaminants can be removed using Polycell Sugar Soap Solution. If there's any loose paint, scrape it off or use a wire brush to remove it completely. Fill cracks and apply a plaster primer to any surfaces that show bare cement. Mark your paint containers with a permanent marker on the top of the container so that you can identify the paint later. Paints contain resins and other particles that tend to sink to the bottom of the can. Mix the paint to suspend these particles evenly in the paint by pouring it into an empty drum and then back into the main drum. Do this at least four times. Smaller paint containers can be stirred by hand, bringing particles from the bottom of the container up into the paint. Remove any light or switch covers and any other fittings where you can. Paint around items that can't be removed. Professional painters either work straight from the drum or use a tray and a paint bucket for brushwork. Attach a piece of wire to the brush and bend it to make a hook. It hangs conveniently on the drum. A second piece of stronger wire bent into an S shape can be attached to the ladder and the paint drum can hang conveniently on the hook. We're using a classic roller and a 75mm fiberglass brush, both by Hamilton's and both reasonably priced. Start edging by applying paint a few millimetres away from the edge and work it into the edge in subsequent strokes. Professionals do not use edging tape. It's expensive and time-consuming to apply. It's quite efficient to work from one side of the wall to the other. When using a roller for the first time, rinse it in water and then wring it out and roll it on a wall to remove most of the water, leaving the nap slightly damp. This is called priming the roller. Roll the paint onto the wall, mixing it into the edging paint. Stay away from the edge. Keep a cloth that is slightly dampened close by to wipe off any mistakes. A good idea is to keep a scraper handy in your back pocket. Of course, wear an overall or old clothes. You will get paint on them. It's vital to use a good ladder. Don't try this with a rickety old ladder. You may spend more on hospital bills than you'll be saving by doing the job yourself. And choose a light ladder you're going to be moving it around a lot. A 2 meter A-frame ladder will reach most lower areas, with a 6 meter extension being perfect for most higher areas of a house. If you're painting over a paved surface, use a drop cloth. Just one drip can cause 10 minutes of cleaning later. There are a few different types of paint that are used to paint a house exterior. There are textured paints that have a slightly rough finish, and smooth paints that are smooth to the touch. We're using a textured water-based acrylic paint from Plascon called Micotex, a high quality paint rated to look good for up to seven years. This is not a job you want to do every three years, so it's really worth using a quality paint. The first coat takes all the time, the second goes much faster. Always apply a second coat. This is the one that will really make the job look good. One coat may look fine initially, but the second really finishes the job and the added protection of a second coat against sun, rain and dirt will give you a very durable finish. Bear in mind that paint with a sheen will highlight any imperfection on the wall. 
So if you've had to do much filling or crack repair, it'll be more advisable to use paint that is a matte finish which won't highlight any imperfections such as Polven or a textured paint such as Micatex. A good tip is to attach an extension pole, which in this case is just an old broomstick, to the roller handle. Wind a few turns of tape around the end until it fits snugly. In this way you can slip it on when you do the higher areas and slide it off for the lower areas. Rolling goes quite quickly. We'll do a section of about 2 meters and then run over the whole section again to ensure that the finish is smooth. The second coat is a repeat of the first with three fantastic exceptions. Firstly, when edging, you can keep a couple of millimeters away from the edge which makes edging much quicker. Then rolling goes quite quickly, making life much easier. And third, you'll use less paint for the second coat, about two-thirds of what was used for the first coat. So bear that in mind when buying the paint. It's always a good idea to have a little paint left over after the job is finished to do touch-ups later or to reorder for the next time. Well, that's about it. Clean, fix up the cracks and imperfections and paint the walls. Check out our crack filling movies, also available free of charge. If you have any more questions, give Plascon's technical experts a ring. They'll be glad to help you.